रिक्शे में सेफ नहीं है बस में सेफ नहीं है स्कूल में सेफ नहीं है छोटी बच्ची सेफ नहीं है तो हम कहाँ सेफ रहेंगे अभी हम भी डरे हुए हैं प्रोटेक्शन तो हमको ये प्रोटेक्शन चाहिए A three-year-old allegedly raped in a reputed school in Mumbai. Her parents say the peon working for the reputed ICSC board school assaulted the child in the washroom of the school between August 1st and 4th. Shocking incident of a sexual assault has come out of a suburban school in Mumbai, a posh suburban school in Mumbai, where a three-year-old uh, nursery child, girl child, was allegedly sexually assaulted. After the parents of the child raised an alarm and reached out to the police, the peon was nabbed. Police have booked the peon under the stringent POCSO or Protection of Children from Sexual Offences Act. Meanwhile, parents of other students gathered this Tuesday outside the school and staged a massive protest. The parents have charged the school with negligence and have demanded the school management assure them of their child's safety in the school. हमको ये चाहिए कि हमारे बच्चे कहाँ safe हैं? रिक्शे में safe नहीं है, बस में safe नहीं है, school में safe नहीं है, छोटी बच्ची safe नहीं है, तो हम कहाँ safe रहेंगे? इसका न्याय चाहिए हमको। अभी हम भी डरे हुए हैं कि एक छोटी बच्ची के साथ हुआ है, कल हम बच्चों को school में भेजेंगे, लड़के के साथ भी होता है। लड़कों के साथ भी होता है ऐसा नहीं कि लड़की के साथ होता है बोलते हैं स्कूल के बाहर की हमारी रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी नहीं है वैन की रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी नहीं है जो स्कूल के अंदर हुआ वो किसकी रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी है पेरेंट्स अंडरस्टैंडेबली फ्यूरियस बट एज मोर केसेस ऑफ चाइल्ड सेक्शुअल अब्यूज आर रिपोर्टेड फ्रॉम स्कूल अक्रॉस इंडिया ऑन दी अर्बन डिबेट वी आस्क Why have CCTVs not yet become compulsory in schools across the country? Why don't staff undergo comprehensive background checks? And why do schools take student safety so lightly? Mirror now report. You're watching the urban debate on Mirror now. Fred Souza, thank you for joining us. It is a reason of grave, grave concern for all of us. While we have strict guidelines on sexual, uh, sexual harassment in our workplaces, we have no guidelines, no guidelines on sexual assault in our schools. There are no rules, no guidelines on how schools should react when they receive a complaint, no guidelines on how schools should do background checks on all of the people they hire to look after children, no guidelines on what should happen to perpetrators, no guidelines on what parents should expect a three-year-old who's been sexually assaulted. Somehow we find ourselves having this conversation again with the stark reality of the fact that our law is inadequate. Our schools are unprepared and they're constantly hiring predators who look at our three-year-olds as sexual objects. That is unfortunately the scary world we live in today. And I want to first go over to our reporter Aditya who's standing by with very very upset parents understandably upset parents and i want to speak to aditya first before we bring in anybody else aditya aap abhi parents ke sath khade ho aap unse baat kijiye puchi ki unko kya chahiye abhi school se and please remind them aditya given the fact that this is a case of poxo uh, that they do not please reveal any details of the victim uh, the complainant of the parents of the area or of the school specifically that they are representing. We just want to understand how they feel as parents. Aditya, go ahead. देखिए सवेरे से ही जो सैकड़ों के इस इसमें जो है पेरेंट्स यहाँ पे आके प्रोटेस्ट कर रहे हैं स्कूल के खिलाफ और पुलिसों के खिलाफ पर अभी तक जो है जो ना ही स्कूल के ट्रस्टी ना ही प्रिंसिपल बाहर आए ना ही उन्हें कोई स्टेटमेंट दिया है हालांकि जो अप्यून है वो अरेस्ट हो चुका है पुलिस कस्टडी में पर जो लोगों की जो यहाँ पर जिनके बच्चे यहाँ पढ़ते हैं वो कह रहे हैं कि यार जो स्कूल है वो भी सेफ़ नहीं है जो सेकेंड होम है हमारा वो भी सेफ नहीं है यहाँ के बहुत जो पेरेंट्स हैं वो सवेरे से यहाँ पर लगे हुए हैं अभी भी जो है यहाँ पर खड़े हैं और एक ही डिमांड है कि जो सेक्रेट जो यहाँ के जो ट्रस्टी हैं और जो प्रिंसिपल हैं उनसे बात करें और प्रिंसिपल ना ही सेक्रेट यहाँ पे आ रहे हैं हम बात पे सीधे कि मैडम आप तो सवेरे से यहाँ पर आप लोग हैं क्या डिमांड है अभी आप लोग की और क्या चाहते हैं आप लोग अभी हम लोग तो इंसाफ चाहते हैं पहली बात तो और ट्रस्टी को मतलब सामने आने के लिए बोल रहे हैं सुबह से खड़े हैं यहाँ पे अब भी ट्रस्टी आ रहा है मतलब सुबह से ट्रस्टी को भी मालूम नहीं है प्रिंसिपाल भी सामने आ नहीं रही है प्रिंसिपाल को जब सामने आ रहे हैं तो हम लोग जबरदस्ती उसको बुला के लेके आ रहे हैं और तो भी बोल रहे हैं हम लोग के स्कूल में हम लोग को मतलब ऐसा हुआ ही नहीं है ऐसा मतलब जब भी इन्वेस्टिगेशन होगा बाद में देखेंगे ये सब बातें मतलब कैसे मतलब हम लोग अपने बच्चे को मतलब कैसे भी स्कूल में भेजें सेफ नहीं है हमारा बच्चा कोई भी 
जाहिर तौर पर मैडम आप बता रही थी कि किस तरह से आपकी बच्ची भी यहाँ पढ़ती है क्या डर अभी आप लोगों को लगता है इसमें नहीं मेरी बच्ची जैसे पढ़ रही है छः साल से तो मुझे ऐसा लगता है कि जैसे सेकेंड हाउस में बच्चों के लिए बोला जाता है हम लोग बच्चों को ऐसे छः घंटा हमारा बच्चा जाता है हमको लगता है हमारा बच्चा सेफ है वहाँ पर पर अभी अभी लगता है कि हमारा बच्चा बिल्कुल भी सेफ नहीं है तो ट्रस्टी जैसे ट्रस्टी हैं ट्रस्टी भी जो है वो सुबह से नहीं आ रहे हैं हम बच्चों को लेने के लिए भाग रहे हैं और मिस कोई भी सेफ्टी नहीं है यहाँ पे तो हम कैसे हम लोग सब चाहिए कि हमारे बच्चे सेफ हैं हमारे स्कूल में जाने के बाद में प्रिंसिपल को इतना तो बोलना चाहिए था ना कि हम हम तुम्हारे साथ में है पेरेंट्स के साथ में है उतना भी नहीं बत बोल रहे वो लोग उतना भी हम लोग को रिस्पॉन्स नहीं दे रहे हैं लड़की जो नौ साल की लड़की हमारी जो स्कूल में जाती है हम तो ये सोच रहे हैं कि हमारी बच्ची सेफ है स्कूल में बैठी हुई है छः घंटा हम लोग बेफिक्र हम घर में बैठे रहते हैं पर जब वो स्कूल से वापस आती है तभी हमें क्या मालूम हो उस, उसके साथ क्या गुजरता है और क्या होता है उसके साथ तो बहुत ही मुश्किल बातें हैं ये मामला जो है एक तारीख से शुरू हुआ था अब तक जो है कुछ कार्रवाई नहीं हो पाई ठीक तरह से आप क्या कहें क्या डिमांड है आप लोगों की सर एक तारीख से मामला शुरू हुआ एक दो तीन डॉक्टर की रिपोर्ट ऐसे बोलती है कि तीन बार एटलीस्ट रेप हुआ है लड़की के ऊपर ऐसा रिपोर्ट वहाँ पे जाना गया और आगे के कार्यक्रम के अंदर की पाँच तारीख को रिपोर्ट लिखा गया संडे शाम को मतलब और मंडे को उनको अरेस्ट किया गया लेकिन जो प्योर ने हरकत की अब स्कूल के अंदर क्लास की कैपेसिटी सिर्फ पच्चीस लोगों की है सिर्फ पच्चीस बच्चे क्लास में बैठते वो भी सिर्फ जूनियर के की बच्ची थी आप समझ सकते हो मतलब तीन साल की बच्ची थी साढ़े साल की बच्ची जूनियर के की बच्ची थी और जिस क्लास के अंदर दो टीचर होती है फुल टाइम टीचर जिसका पेमेंट हम लोग पे करते हैं उसके क्लासरूम के बाहर दो मौसी बेड ही रहती है जिसका पेमेंट भी हम लोग पे करते हैं फिर भी हमारी बच्ची वो क्लासरूम में सेफ नहीं है अच्छा ऐसा था कि तीन दिन से वो लड़की वहाँ से जा रही है मौसी लेके जा रही है वो जेंट्स लड़की लड़की को लड़की को जेंट्स टॉयलेट में लेके जाने की इतनी इमरजेंसी क्या हुई पहले तो अच्छा स्कूल के बच्चों के अंदर बैग के अंदर हम लोग और एक कपड़ा एक्स्ट्रा भी भेजते हैं क्योंकि अभी बच्चे ने गिला कर दिया तो वापस एक एक्सचेंज कर सकते हैं तो इतनी इमरजेंसी नहीं थी कि उसको लेडीज टॉयलेट आप नहीं पहुँचा पाओ जेंट्स टॉयलेट में लेके जाने की जरूरत क्या थी अच्छा दो दो टीचर दी तो टीचर को समझता नहीं कि दो घंटे तक लड़की वहां पे क्लासरूम में नहीं थी तो लड़की गई कहां पे तो दो टीचर वहां पे स्कूल में क्यों रखी है अगर ऐसे ही स्कूल चलाने तो फिर स्कूल बंद कर दो इतने बड़ी बड़ी स्कूल्स के नाम है मतलब मुंबई के अंदर बहुत बड़ा नाम है स्कूल का और इस स्कूल के ऊपर धब्बा ये बहुत बड़ा धब्बा और इसके पहले भी दो तीन इंसिडेंट ऐसे हुए हैं जिसका कोई अभी भी दबा रहे हैं वो लोग अभी भी दबाने की कोशिश कर रहे हैं ऐसे ही दब जाएगा और जैसे दबना नहीं चाहिए और हम लोग की ऐसी डिमांड हम लोग की मतलब की सभी पेरेंट्स की ऐसी यहाँ पे डिमांड है कि ये जो भी हम लोग ने यहाँ पे पॉइंट्स रखे हुए हैं अब यहाँ पे मेंशन हम लोगों ने मेंशन कराया हुआ है कि यहाँ के जो मैनेजर है उनसे सिग्नेचर हमने लिया हुआ है कि यहाँ पे प्यून मौसी जो भी जितने भी इसके कल थे टीचर थी एडमिन हेड थे और वो सभी को कानून और मैनेजमेंट सख्त से सजा दे और दूसरा और जो लड़की का ये हादसा हुआ है वो लड़की का तो एजुकेशन नहीं पूरी लाइफ का उसका जितना भी खर्चा वो देना चाहिए स्कूल का क्योंकि आगे जाके इसकी वजह से कौन सी बीमारी कहाँ पे वो हमें मालूम नहीं है तो उसकी वजह से पूरी तकलीफ उसको लड़की को जितनी भी तकलीफ होती है वो सबका सलूशन उसका देना चाहिए और ये एग्जाम्पल ये एग्जाम्पल सिर्फ मलाड़ के नव पोदार स्कूल का नहीं ये एग्जाम्पल से पूरी मुंबई की स्कूल या पूरी इंडिया की स्कूल सुधरनी चाहिए ताकि हर एक स्कूल के अंदर सिक्योरिटी बढ़नी चाहिए ये हमारा सबसे पहला मोटो है और ये लड़की के पीछे हम लोग सोचते थे कि हमारी मुंबई से सेफ है और स्कूल हमारे मुंबई के सारे सेफ है वो अभी लगता है कि बिल्कुल भी नहीं है हम अपने बच्चों को छोड़ छोड़ने छोड़ने आते हैं जब उसके बाद हम तो टेंशन हो रहा है तो भी अंदर मत आओ और सर अंदर जो हो रहा है वो आप इसे एक पेरेंट्स डिमांड कर रहे थे कि जो है जेंट्स प्यून नहीं होने चाहिए ये क्या चाह रहे हैं प्यून होने ही नहीं चाहिए क्योंकि वो होने से सर हम लोग ने नहीं होना ही नहीं चाहिए क्योंकि वो होने से तो इतने सारे प्रॉब्लम हो रहे हैं हम लोग ने जेंट्स प्यून होने चाहिए ना जेंट्स टीचर्स होने चाहिए मैं तो बोलती हूं क्योंकि छोटे बच्चों के लिए बहुत मुश्किल है क्योंकि कहीं बच्चे इतने इनोसेंट हमारे क्योंकि टीचर कहां पे किसको कहां हाथ लगाता है अपने को मालूम ही नहीं चलता है हमें क्या मालूम चलेगा कि टीचर कहाँ किधर हाथ लगा रहा है बच्चे को कुछ मालूम नहीं चलता है बच्चा बड़ा इनोसेंट रहता है इसके लिए मैं नहीं चाहती हूँ कि स्कूल में बच्चे तो हम देखते हैं कि हमारे जो मंत्री हैं या पुलिस अफसर भी बहुत तो ये कहते हैं कि कपड़ों की वजह से या फिर रात में घूमने गई है भारी इस वजह से होता है ये तो बच्ची है छोटी बच्ची है तो क्या कहेंगे इसमें मतलब आज के टाइम में कोई भी सेफ नहीं है क्या नहीं बिल्कुल नहीं मतलब स्कूल में ही नहीं भरोसा करे तो फिर बाहर तो बात ही अलग है घर में तब तक ठीक है फिर स्कूल बाहर तो हमारे पास है चलो लेकिन ये स्कूल स्कूल जहाँ पे गुरु मतलब पढ़ा प्रिंसिपल जो मेन पूरा पूरा ट्रस
प्रिंसिपल ने आंसर ही नहीं दिया हमें वो आने को बोलने को तैयार नहीं विद्या का मंदिर बोलते हैं हम लोग विद्या का मंदिर जो ट्रस्टी लोग ने विद्या का मंदिर खोला हुआ है कि बच्चों के लिए अच्छा वो ही ट्रस्टी घूम है सुबह से ट्रस्टी नहीं आ रहे हैं और उल्टा ये सब खराब ये लोग सब लोग मिलके ही और उल्टा नहीं नहीं पूरी एक चेन है ये मेरे को लगता है अभी भी मामला दबाया जा रहा है आज भी आज भी आज भी पूरा एकदम आज भी पूरा धमकी से बात किया जा रहा है आज भी पूरा धमकी से क्या करने वाला है कुछ आप लोग करने वाले हैं कुछ सर आगे हम लोग का पहला पूरा मैनेजमेंट स्कूल प्यून टीचर स्टाफ जितने नॉन टीचिंग स्टाफ सभी टीचर्स सभी के सभी चेंज होके सिर्फ और सिर्फ लेडी स्टाफ अपॉइंट करो और सबको सस्पेंड करे रिजिग्नेशन नहीं सबको सस्पेंड करे किधर भी जॉब नहीं मिलनी चाहिए किधर भी नहीं और सभी स्कूल को रिक्वेस्ट है ये टीचर्स किधर से भी कम आए जॉब के लिए तो कोई भी इसको रखे मत ये टीचर्स को तो आप तौर पर जो गुस्सा आप देख रही हैं यही गुस्सा है जो सवेरे से यहाँ पर और इस गुस्सा ऐसा है कि तकरीबन सैकड़ों की संख्या में जो है पेरेंट्स जो यहाँ पर ये कर रहे हैं पुलिस है यहाँ पर पर अब तक जो है ना कोई ट्रस्टी ना ही प्रिंसिपल ने कोई पॉजिटिव बयान दिया है इसके ऊपर क्योंकि एक जो बच्ची है वो तीन साल आठ महीने की बच्ची है और ऐसे में ऐसी स्थिति में जब कुछ होता है तो ये बहुत ही शर्मनाक चीज़ है हमारे भारत के लिए और हमारे मुंबई के लिए With the other parents of the school children, where this incident has been reported, like Aditya was telling us, this is a three-year-old, a three-year and eight-month-old child who was taken by the pune allegedly into the male uh, washrooms or the toilets, was missing for two hours. When the child came back, the child complained that day to her parents that. So and so had done this to her that there was a sexual assault that taken place. The parents had then taken the child for a medical test and filed an official complaint. The pune in question has been taken into custody, but in the meantime, there has been what can only be described as abject confusion for parents, for the other parents in that school, as they gathered around the school, wondering what was going on. They asked for CCTV footage. They were told that no CCTV footage was available. They were, they asked to speak with the principal. They asked to speak with school management, and they like they just told us, and they told Aditya no answers were available to them. And then finally, at some point during the day, uh, at, at some point during the day, they were asked to take their children home. Aditya is still standing by. Aditya, uh, I also want to understand. आपके साथ जो खड़े थे किसी ने ये भी कहा है कि ये पहली इंसिडेंट नहीं है इसके पहले भी ऐसे एक दो इंसिडेंट्स हुए थे उन उनसे सारा पूछ लीजिए और आपके पास अगर आ, कोई ऐसे पेरेंट है जिस जिसको कुछ कहना है अभी तो उनको माइक दे दीजिए जी आप आप बता रहे थे कि ये पह, ये पहली इंसिडेंट नहीं थी आप बता रहे थे इसके पहले तो क्या उसके बारे में अगर आप कुछ रोशन डाल सके उसके बारे में तो इसके पहले भी दो हुए हैं जिसके एक हुआ है एक तीन साल पहले एक रेप हुआ है जो उसका उन लोग दबा दिया है पांचवी क्लास की लड़की थी उसका इधर रेप हुआ था और उन्होंने वो केस दबा दिया उन्होंने बोला कि लड़की वैसी थी वो ये उनका स्कूल वाले का कहना है और घर वाले उनके वो सब दब गए वो सोचे कि चलो हो गया गलती तो उसका हो गया तीन साल की लड़की भी वैसी ही है दूसरा इंसिडेंट के बारे में और दूसरा और है कि जो इन लोग पिकनिक लेके गए थे बीच में बीच में एक पाँच मेरे साल भर के पहले एक पिकनिक लेके गए वो पिकनिक में उन्होंने वो किया है पिकनिक में उन्होंने बच्चे लोग के साथ मस्ती की है ये चीज़ यही मस्ती वहाँ पर भी हुई है वो भी ऐसी दबा दी है जब तक ये चीज का फाइनल इन्वेस्टिगेशन नहीं होगा और कोई डिसीजन नहीं होगा मतलब प्रिंसिपल का रेजिग्नेशन टीचर्स का नए स्टाफ अपॉइंट नहीं होंगे सीसीटीवी कैमरा सब जगह नहीं लगेंगे ये जो हमारी डिमांड से यहाँ पे दी हुई है ये जब तक कम्प्लीट नहीं होगी और बच्ची को जब तक इंसाफ नहीं मिलेगा तब तक यहाँ पे स्कूल चालू नहीं होगी स्कूल बंद रहेगी कल सुबह सात बजे सब पेरेंट्स यहाँ पे आएंगे जितनों को मालूम नहीं है उनको ही बताएंगे और स्कूल के एजुकेशन से दस दिन में कोई फर्क नहीं पड़ेगा ना एक महीने में फर्क पड़ेगा हमारे बच्चे घर पे बैठेंगे कोई टेंशन नहीं है बच्चे टी वाई के बच्चे बच्चे पंद्रहवीं के बाद भी सी बनते और पंद्रह के बाद भी डॉक्टर बन सकते हैं तो दस दिन पंद्रह दिन एक महीना नहीं पड़ेंगे कुछ फर्क नहीं पड़ेगा हम लोग सब बच्ची के साथ है हमको इंसाफ चाहिए और ये पूरी इंडिया की स्कूल सुधरनी चाहिए एक स्कूल नहीं आज हमारी बच्ची है कल इनकी बच्ची कल कल किसी और की बच्ची भी हो सकती है और जो बीजेपी का बहुत बड़ा स्लोगन जो है हम लोग का स्ट्रॉन्ग ऑपोज आज इसलिए है बेटी बचाओ बेटी पढ़ाओ बेटी बचाओ बेटी 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 पढ़ाओ और बेटी बचाओ आज ये कहाँ पे सब लोग और कल ही हम लोग ने हरियाणा का भी केस हुआ बहुत बड़ा आई ऑफिसर की लड़की का भी रेप हुआ तो ये सब इसके ऊपर जब तक कोई स्ट्रांग डिसीजन नहीं लिया जाएगा जैसे अपने दुबई के अंदर जो गवर्नमेंट्स के अंदर जैसे कैसे होता है सर कंप्लीट करने दो प्लीज़ 
जब तक दुबई okay. गवर्नमेंट कैसे करती okay. है कोई भी प्रॉब्लम किया right. हो रेप किया उसका जो भी है वो अंग काट दिया जाए जब तक ऐसा काम okay. कानून okay. नहीं आएगा right. देश के अंदर सर right. जब तक प्लीज जब तक ऐसा कानून नहीं आएगा देश के अंदर सर ये तो केस चलते रहेंगे छह महीने तो हम लोग इसका फॉलोअप लेंगे बाद में हम लोग को भी काम है और कुछ जाहिर है जो गुस्सा है की बेटी बचाओ बेटी पढ़ाओ को लेकर जो एक आक्रोश है लोगों में ये दिख रहा है यहाँ पे बहुत ज्यादा आक्रोश है लोगों में और ये कह रहे हैं कि जो बच्चे हैं वो उसको मिल जाएंगे जब तक वहाँ से प्रिंसिपल या ट्रस्टी की रेजिस्ट्रेशन ना हो जाए और कल से ही है कल भी ये बड़ा प्रोटेस्ट होगा और शायद दिन भर चलने वाला है जी All right, all right, Aditya. Many thanks for joining us uh, with those agitation parents. And I, and I just want to point out one thing to our viewers: we've had cases like this in the past, where the where the school is worried about its reputation. It is worried about being able to continue in business. Other parents have been worried about the fact that what will happen if my child is taken out? If the school shuts down, where will my child go? Media. But here are a set of parents who are saying that we don't mind. We don't mind if our children don't go to school for the next 15, 20 days, for the next month. But we will keep our kids out of school until we get justice for this one little girl. And I think that that really displays the absolute devastation of what has happened here in Mumbai. And this is not a singular Mumbai case. We've seen it happen in Bangalore. We've seen it happen in Delhi. We've seen it happen in Pune. Uh, we've seen it happen in Gurgaon, in Noida. It's appalling, and it's simply because we do not have rules in our country about how schools need to hire people, about how schools need to monitor who's on campus, and how schools need to deal with these complaints. I welcome onto the show this evening Arthi Sathe, spokesperson of the Mumbai BJP, Vikram Singh, former DJP Uttar Pradesh, Iknakshi Ganguly. Tukral is the co-founder of Hak, the Center for Child's Rights. Rama Kanwar, senior lawyer with the Supreme Court. Kavita Sangvi, principal of MIT Rishi Kul and secretary of the members of International Schools Association. Rachita Gupta is an advocate who specializes in cases of protection of children from sexual offences. And uh, I welcome all of you to the to this conversation right now. And to our viewers, you know, you can either pick up the phone and call us, or you can log on to Involve.in. Uh, click on mirror now and leave your comments or your questions there. They will automatically pop up onto the screen. It is the fastest way to be part of this conversation. I want to bring in Vikram Singh. Vikram Singh, what a horrid, horrid story! And this is not the first one we have brought onto this channel. And I believe that at 9 p.m. at prime time, there is nothing more important we should be talking about than the safety of our children. Because when parents drop their children off at school, they are not allowed to go in. You have to let your child go at the school gate, and you cannot be held responsible for what happens inside. You are completely and utterly powerless as a parent. But we have no rules on how the schools will look after our children, Vikram Singh. Faye, what could be more shocking than this? That a child has been subjected to this kind of a despicable. and and brutal behavior it is not just the child that has been raped it is a future that has been raped it is the family that has been raped and the trauma is going to stick for a lifetime the indifference with which the school has come out it seems that they are not owning up to the criminal negligence i would not say just negligence but criminal negligence i can recall my school days that in my infancy a matron would take pains to go with us even a single child men to men, boys to boys and girls to girls and both were out of bounds for the other genders boys was out of bounds for girls and girls was out of bounds for boys it was just could not happen and every person who was hired was subjected to due diligence and inquiry because it is known fact as rajat will tell all of us that predators have a knack of getting and infiltrating into systems of trusting positions because speed of files are those criminals who penetrate and infiltrate into systems in positions of authority because pornography child pornography is something that sells like hot cakes the world over it is more insidious than what we seem and the principals the shameless manner in which the management and the principal have washed their hands of the case i would say that the vicarious responsibility their individual responsibility they should be charged under 120b of the ipc under poxo and under the rape charges it is not just the two pns who should be held responsible but the principal with also and those who were responsible for the security of the child and i would say nothing could be more shocking and devastating than a horrific incident like this let us discuss it further and let us see if there can be a course correction yes. if there can be a prevention apart right. from due diligence and due care and caution from all of us all the stakeholders 
Right, right. Aarti Sati, spokesperson of the BJP, joins us right now. Aarti Sati is also uh, a lawyer herself. Aarti Sati, this is not the first case. On the 18th of May, we brought up a similar case where a trustee had allegedly raped a three-year-old student in a school in Mumbai. At that point, we had appealed to the Maharashtra government, to the education minister, to work on guidelines or to put out guidelines on how schools need to hire people, how schools have to do background checks, how schools have to have CCTV cameras, how schools have to make sure that children are actually safe and how they deal with these complaints. None of that has been done, Aarti Sate. Is Beti Bachao only a slogan? Why is it the women in child ministry in the central government has done nothing in this direction? Why are we only sloganeering about our children and not doing any work about it? Okay, first of all, let me begin by saying that it's a very condemnable thing what has happened today as far as this molestation is concerned. Coming to your question that the government has not acted upon it or the government has really only sloganed about the Betty Bachao and not really made any uh, concrete steps have not been taken, uh, I would just like to bring to your notice that as far as in 2016, there is a general resolution which the government has moved after the Bombay High Court order to say that every school will have CCTV cameras on the premises which applies to both aided and unaided schools. The government at the same time at, has always sensitized the police. In your earlier show of uh, I think 18th May when this incident happened, I had also mentioned that we have started a, a police sakhi program wherein uh, students or especially girl child has been uh, have been encouraged rather to speak to the police constables police constables go to respective schools and they make them aware of the difference between the touch the good touch and the bad touch uh, the ministry of your your women and child development is also working with various uh, ngos and think tanks to bring about uh, you know separate security measures and ultimately uh, every school it is every school's responsibility really to take care of the internal security the government will obviously from time to time step in like in this situation uh, you know requisite FIRs or police action etc will be taken but to have any government person monitoring every school's action it's not possible but as a government, we are very sure that we are and not we going to let these kind of acts be responsible for the and supervision the and superintendence of the functioning of the schools. As well. We have a department of education, we have an which inspector. Which is okay, which is okay, but the internal security the internal security has to be taken care by the school. The government will step Teachers in only when these kind government. of incidences happened or are reported. The government ultimately, no, the government ultimately is in a position only to issue guidelines like the CCTV guidelines which have been issued. The government that has too, to issue that guidelines. That too after the directions so received from Bombay High Court. Court. And the government did not make up. Right, right. To our panel, to, to, my, to my panel this evening. It had already panel, started. started. It already started. Hey, One second. We have Archie a district Archie. inspector One of schools who is supposed to Hey, we have right, a I just want to go, by, go through this one by hmm. one. One second, uh, uh, Vikram Singh. I want to go through this one by one so our audience can understand every detail because there are parents watching now who want to understand what is mandatory, what is not mandatory, what are the rules, what are not the rules so they can go to school tomorrow and actually check to see whether or not their schools are following the rules. Vikram Singh, go ahead. There is an institution by the name of District Inspector of Schools. It is a job to see and monitor whether the government instructions are followed in letter and spirit. And if they are not, it is a job to see to punish the management and the principal and the staff recommend punitive action against the school. That is why the District Inspector of School is there to see that the government guidelines are enforced and enforced in letter and spirit. And if they are not, to stop all subsidy and even cancel the license of the school. The government cannot be a silent spectator to the depredations that happens like this and be a silent witness to the predators who are unleashing their reign of terror in this manner. Right, Inakshi, Inakshi Ganguly, uh, uh, Tukral, go ahead. Do you believe that there is enough being done to keep our children safe? We still don't have a regulation that makes sure that every employee, pune or otherwise, is put through a careful background check. Do you think we should be doing more? Is the government doing enough? There, there needs to be a lot more done. But the first thing that I want to say is, um, 
you know i am a little worried that we always put the owners of protection on the children we teach tell them good touch bad touch but they are the ones who tell us what's happening to them it's when it's adults who fail these children so it's not enough to tell them about good touch bad touch it is about the adults holding adults responsible what shocked me in this whole interview as i was as i was watching your program is the complete lack of responsibility taken by the management of the school the principal and the trustees because the school is a supposed to be a safe space where is their child protection policy every school is mandatorily expected to have a child protection policy which will tell you exactly what is to be done step by step where is it i don't see it obviously it's not there um incidents can happen it despite all our best efforts incidents may happen it is that's that's when the head of the institution shows res takes responsibility comes out and assures parents that they are taking notice the the fact that the school is not taking cognizance of such an such a heinous offense inside their premises itself shows how um, how how the system is so worried about stigmatization and i was also worried about the fact that it this happened twice before and in one one of the parents sort of said something about waise hi ladki thi was what was said about that girl who was in class 5 yes. so the whole yes. issue of child sexual abuse is so mired in stigmatization and so mired in uh, you know reputation um that the school is so worried about its reputation that it's not worried about the safety of the child and yes child protection policy would have been mandatory that every employee would have had to sign on to it and somebody mentioned mandatory reporting yes boxo requires mandatory reporting mandatory reporting is for schools institutions anybody anybody who knows about what has happened to a child is mandatorily expected to go and report and so if the school had come to know about it and they haven't reported actually penal action can be taken against them under poxo and of course yeah. as uh, the pol the gentleman the police officer said Dr. mr vijay that it could it can also be under the ipc but what, what uh, this is not as you've mentioned this is not the only in, only incidents so clearly what we are doing is um is a malaise in society which we are allowing to continue because we as people who run institutions are not willing to take a firm stand on it and that is where it starts it's not just about the government it's it's also about the people who run these institutions right and you know uh, i just want to take some of these responses shreya from bangalore says face shouldn't there be a fair trial done before blaming the school uh, gurpreet says this is happening again and again this is a serious crime we must set an example here prima facie the pun should be jailed if not today but tomorrow harshit that pun is already in custody but i just want to point out to shreya this is exactly what we're talking about what inashi just said it's about how the school deals with the problem how they communicate with the parents how they aid the police while the police is doing their job this is all needs to be either mandated with guidelines and if the school is not doing it under the law of poxo the school management can be prosecuted i want to bring in uh, rachit gupta rachit gupta hello the fact that uh, the thing that yeah. scared me the most with the parents who said that there have been other cases that the school has had it i would That's like to bring really bring scary. out here that the children are the most vulnerable part of our society they are the one who are not able to speak about their uh, experiences what is happening with them in the school in the, with the society they are not able to bring it uh, with the people and i would like to bring that there is no law to protect the children of the apprehension of any offense which has been committed with them or they are feeling that something wrong which is happening with them even the poxo under section 19 it just says if the child is of an apprehension that an offense will be committed with him he can go to sjpu or to the police and look to the local police and say that an offense will be committed with him or he is of an apprehension that such, such an offense will be committed with him but there is no other law which says that and one more thing i would like to bring in that a uh, guidelines uh, in delhi a guidelines were laid down by delhi government in 2013 regarding the schools and the protection of children but nowhere it has been implemented the implementation is zero on ground and it is a very comprehensive guidelines which which is which can also be seen on the website of delhi government but the those guidelines can nowhere be seen on the ground 
And as per there, I would like to bring on few points if there is some time that the few points that would, would be which which could be bring in the society as the recruitment process, the person who is already convicted of an offense with a child offense ch uh, with the child offenses should not be recruited. Secondly, there should be training processes, a uniform standard uh, training module should be made where the stakeholders, all the stakeholders like teachers, society, society child, uh, the teachers, the counselors, right, right. the principals, everyone should be trained properly and there should be some, cons there should be mandatory counselors in every school through which the children could, uh, could communicate with them properly and uh, bring their problems to them. If there is, yes. if there is any kind of uh, issue they are facing in the school, or there should be some committee in the right, school. Let, let, me, let, me come back, let me come back to you. Yes, yes. Uh, Rachid, let me come back to you. just want to bring in the other two members of the panel. Ramakant Gaur, we've brought this up in the past. We've asked for, uh, for uh, you know, background checks on every member who's hired, not just on school premises, but also in school buses and, and as attendance, even part-time. Anyone who has access to children should have a background check, a thorough background check that's done. Also, there have to be guidelines on how schools handle these complaints, how they're registered, how they're reported. Because obviously, schools have a vested interest in burying these complaints or burying these cases, as we've seen them do in the past. So we cannot have a situation where the principal or the management or the trustee of the school is in charge of the complaint. Undoubtedly, Faye, because they run the schools in the shape of business. And even if the norms of the business are not followed, guide guidelines resoluted by the governments are not taken care of. They are passed in the name of the guidelines, but nobody bothers about the supervision. The process about the recruitment of the employees is not mandated anywhere. And there is no check by the government whatsoever in nature to put put a, uh, to verify whether the processes are in place, whether the recruitment is being done in a process established by law, no check. And then more uh, painful is that after such incidents, the management or the principal is not coming forward to address uh, the parents. That's something which is very uh, painful. And they are not only shrugging off from their responsibility, they are actually evading uh, the mass question as to why should I send my kid to the school who, uh, who is unsafe. So that's, that's a pathetic problem which is coming up and the government is also silent about this. Very worrying case of a three-year-old child in a school in Mumbai who was allegedly sexually assaulted by the pune of that school. According to the report that the police have received, the Pun took the child into the boys' uh, washrooms or toilets where she was held for two hours. The child then reported to her mother what had happened. The mother got a uh, medical test done and then filed a complaint. Parents have now all gone to the school, picked up their children and threatened that tomorrow they will protest. None of their children will go to the school until they receive until their series of demands are met, the demands are on your screen and their demands are very valid. CCTV camera footage or CCTV cameras are not functioning in the school. Parents want that everyone who is hired in that school right now be either or have a background check done on them or they be removed. We agree that these sort of rules must be brought in. We have uh, also with us Kavita Sangvi. Kavita is the principal of MET Rishi Kool and she's also a member, the secretary of the Members of International Schools Association. Tell us very clearly, Kavita, what are the what is the mandate requisite safety uh, in schools right now when it comes to sexual assault on children? Basically, we are supposed to, as soon as something comes up to us, we're supposed to inform the local police and then they will take up the matter. And after everything is done from there, from school onwards, we can take any uh, action later on. But the first thing is the minute things come up, we're supposed to inform the local police. Okay. And what about CCTV cameras? What about doing background checks on people who definitely work there? Is there very any much sort of mandated rule. Yeah. So definitely, we are supposed to have CCTV cameras, and um, all the two staff should be oriented about it. Also about. Uh, safe touch, make sure that the no male's member is with any child alone. So these sort of uh, certain orientation with the staff has to happen very much at the onset 
also for every new staff there has to be an induction process where they're supposed to understand exactly what are the do's and what are the don'ts with when you're dealing with students uh, similarly the parents need to understand how to approach teachers the students need to understand what is safe touch and good touch what we have been talking about so these are certain mandates that schools are supposed to be having and it should have a child protection policy in place and at least make sure that uh, male members have police verification done no when you say these are mandates do you say that this is good practice that all schools should do or are you saying this is government mandated regulation for every no, school it's, it's a good practice the schools should be doing but that's not um, i mean the government definitely tells you to do it but we are not nobody is coming down a check on us and told us are you doing this so but uh, we do it on our own as a good school and also as members of um, international school association we make sure that when we have orientation of all the schools we do make sure that every principal has been going through the poxo act and that a child protection policy mm -hmm. is taken care of in every school so as uh, misa does it well uh, you know this this yeah yeah you you're very right kavita a lot of responsible schools i'm sure are doing it what about the other schools what about the state syllabus schools what about the bmc corporation schools are but, we actually but, but looking at what the problem do is that it is not the complaints that yes go ahead so no definitely i mean i don't know about the other schools because it's very difficult to keep a check there is no inspection happening as such and telling us you know do you have this in place do you have that in place so um as i said the school, few schools which have understood that the child is the most important thing in the school and the chief safety of the child is most primarily important are doing the needful the rest we cannot go and ask any other school what are you doing it becomes difficult for us i did i want to i want to bring in aarti sathi aarti you said that the school the government cannot be part of every school and cannot be there but that is what the education department is for the education department is for enforcement the police is for enforcement the education department has to go to every school and make sure that rules are being followed a we don't have rules and the ones that we have are not being enforced and of course that is the responsibility of the government and i'm going to keep circling back to this i'm sorry because this is a slogan that was not written by us but by the government themselves and you say beti bachao beti padhao doesn't that specifically talk about girl children inside of schools who have zero protection right now do you see the irony of where we are today see not even once have i ever said on any of the shows that the government is not responsible but let me at the same time tell you that the government is an overseeing body the government frames rules it is ultimately for the stakeholders to implement those rules if by any chance the That's inspections not are not happening at the right time surely well we will see to it that one minute the authorities who are made to do those inspections and if they are not carrying out those duties those functions we will surely step in we will see to it that those inspections are taken uh, uh, you know are going on periodically let me also bring to your attention that the central government has issued a policy a host of norms called the regulatory guidelines for private play schools 2017 which mandates schools to register with local laws and local law enforcement agencies and get basically a verification check done on each of the prospective employees now the framework has been set up by the government how that framework is implemented by each and every school is something which every school really has to take into consideration so if the schools are not really taking into consideration to primarily place place the onus on the government would be a slightly incorrect thing to do we will step in we have never shied away from the fact that we will not step in if there are any demands of the stakeholders if there are demands of the parents of these kind of heinous attack heinous molestations which are taking place surely well with the help of various ngos we will bring into uh, you know policies into picture in fact we are not only making horse or tall claims about beti pachao beti padhao i know i'm slightly digressing but look at it there was a time when many girl students really never went to school because there were not enough toilets in school the moment this government has come into the picture we have ensured that more toilets are built and hence there are more girl children who have really enrolled into school so that's not a mere formality that we are sloganering coming back to the security issue we have at all times said that we are taking steps and we will continuously take steps 
for ensuring that the law and order in the state and in the city is ensure, is you know kept at its highest and let me tell you one more thing fay normally these kind of molestations are you know take place by people who are familiar with the child like the pure may be friendly with the child or somebody who has a fiduciary capacity as far as the child is concerned in such situations children and schools especially teachers have a more onerous responsibility of really educating the child as to what is the right touch and the wrong touch and what are things which they should avoid so as a government we'll play our role okay. but the teachers the stakeholders the parents are equally responsible for bringing about certain semblance as far as the security system in schools is concerned Well, All right. Let me point out start. to you, uh, Arthi Sati. One second. Since you talked about the government's regulatory guidelines for private play schools, these are play schools specifically. They do not cover regular schools. Secondly, since you said that the government can only do so much, no, that's I'm not agree. how regulation works. No, I'm agreeing. I'm agreeing. I never said the they cover the government. regular schools. It's right. Let me finish. No, I said. Now, I said these, that if there when, are when any the government further forms, regulations which need to be put in place, we will. And then forms, law and order ultimately is the enforcement agencies will do. The police will step in. And the police reports to whom? Yes, carry on, please. Yes. So when when the Hello? government makes regulations, it's not about just writing out like your regulations and saying that let's actually. uh see if people you know give people the choice of whether or not they want to follow these regulations that's not how regulation works enforcement law and order police finally reports to the home ministry and to governments of every state also the regulations that you are talking about specify how many teacher per student it doesn't talk about sexual let me finish it doesn't talk about sexual assault also it says that every state may use these guidelines and notify these guidelines as they seem fit as these guidelines have been written as suggestions by the central government so here's my question has maharashtra notified these guidelines has madhya pradesh notified these guidelines has uttar pradesh notified these guidelines has any state run by the bjp notified these guidelines well i can't really give you this answer at this point of time because i i cannot authoritatively say whether these guidelines only, have been only only two states but have but these guidelines have been issued by the center only two one states minute, have one minute one minute you may have the information which i may not have and you will you may have the information you may have the information which i may not have and i have very fairly said that i cannot authoritatively tell you but surely well if these guidelines have been issued by the center the state has taken cognizance of it and the state is ensuring that steps are being taken so yeah. it's not a fact that the state in actually, is in actually lying to all these ahead. things maharashtra police has in fact bombay police has been one of the most active police uh, police authorities in the country I really don't know what's wrong. Inakshi, Inakshi, go ahead. Yeah, I just was uh, concerned that that uh, you know the the principal of the school very beautifully put what is required to be done, but what she describes as best practice actually needs to become mandatory practice in every school. हर एक स्कूल में यही होना चाहिए ना सिर्फ कुछ अच्छे स्कूलों में नहीं चाहे वो सरकारी हो गैर सरकारी हो छोटे हो बड़े हो ऑल ऑफ दीज स्कूल्स हैव टू हैव दीज मैंडेटरी प्रैक्टिसेस सेकंडली द गवर्नमेंट कैन नॉट हैज अ वेरी बिग ओवरसाइट रोल एंड द ओवरसाइट रोल इज इंस्पेक्शन इट इज अबाउट वेन श्योरिंग दैट एवरी स्कूल हैज अ चाइल्ड प्रोटेक्शन पॉलिसी एंड विच इज बींग फॉलोड You can, I, and I agree. Government cannot be everywhere. No one can be everywhere. But the checks and balances have to be in place. And if they are not in place, who is going to be responsible to ensure that they are, that they are in place? Beti bachao, beti parhao is very important. But it is child sexual abuse does not know gender. So. i was worry equally about boys who are in the schools and boys are getting equally sexually abused except that it is the stigmatization is so big that nobody even talks about them so we are talking about safe spaces for boys and girls in in schools and we are talking about sen uh, you know adults who are actually holding themselves responsible for protecting the children not we not just we holding adults responsible but adults who to hold themselves responsible when they take when they are caregivers and and teachers for children and that requires training that requires sensitization but most importantly it requires accountability measures are we putting those accountability measures in, in place is something i would like to ask 
Right, and, and Inashi, you were talking about how many states have actually ratified the guidelines of play schools. How many states have done it and which are those states? Yeah. No, I, the, you know, the, 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 the Juvenile Justice Act, um, the previous one, the one that was 2000, had a rule, rule number 31, which actually ma uh, required schools to develop ma mandatory guidelines. So Delhi government, which the gentleman before talked about, Delhi government did uh, bring out a set of guidelines on child sexual abuse and child abuse, which was developed by the State Commission for Child, child Rights in Delhi. Karnataka did that too, but no, not that, to my knowledge, no other state has done it. The new law does not require it, but in the new law, also, it doesn't mean that it, the child protection policies still do not have to be in place. Um, that, that the, you know, it, it is, it's not about just the play schools, it needs to be about all schools, right up to class 12. Right. Uh, and know, it has to be in Ashram Shalas, it has to be in every kind of school that we're talking about across the country. Ramakar, this is this is worrying when we talk about the fact that there are these guidelines written for play schools that most states have not adopted. Uh, we cannot look at this as a you know the excuse that we get from government or law enforcement is that we cannot possibly be everywhere at the same time. A lot of times, the people who do the who who commit these crimes are known uh, to the victims. They're known to the victims because they're being allowed inside of schools as pawns, as caretakers. This we cannot allow and. and Somehow there is a laxity here on behalf of people who write our laws, isn't there? The laxity is ostensible on the face of record. Because, you see, Ms. Sate has specifically admitted on the uh, trauma as I admitted that there is no mechanism as on date to supervise the rules and the regulations. I have not, I have not admitted that there is no mechanism. Sorry, okay, sorry, you, I have not admitted not... there is no mechanism. Okay, I have is, said yeah. that if the mechanism, one minute, one minute, let me clarify, let me clarify, let me let clarify, me come, I have said that education officers have been asked to inspect every, after every six months, if CCTVs have been installed. In the event they are not doing it, and if it is brought to our attention, surely well, we will take action against them. But to say that what event no will be brought to your attention? I have told you, we have displayed to you right now that there are no CCTV uh, cameras operational in any school. You have a teacher, a very respected teacher, that is respected for the school saying nobody That's comes for to the check. schools to implement. That no, it's not. No, it, no, it is not. It Those is not the schools, the schools who wrote the slogan Beti Bachao. It is not the schools. Of the, schools. Of the, the government must take responsibility. No. Okay. No, it is the government please who gives licenses to these schools. Do not, please, 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 no, one minute. I don't think it's a nice answer. The cameras have to be installed by the school. If in the implementation, if there are any lacunae, and if that has happened, then the government will step in. But to say that the government needs to be at every place, please do not have this incorrect propaganda. Who will supervise that? Who will see whether the rules are being actually implemented? If there is no check which is happening, one minute, one minute. One minute. So are you taking away the onus away from schools? Are you taking the onus away from schools? Are you taking the onus away from schools? You are taking the onus away from schools. You are only so have, have you and had any school responsible and I said, for this? if the government has lacks one hey, we minute, are passing the bucket one shifting minute, responsibility. one minute, you're not, you're, you, if you're going to just keep shouting, absolutely, it's a joint collective responsibility. If the government has failed somewhere, we will step in, we will bring about the correction. Uh, I'm telling possible. you that you have but failed. But to say that the government has I'm completely telling you failed, you have failed, all that I'm saying, that is incorrect. All right, no, Vikram Singh, Vikram Singh, let's talk Madam about how, rules, how, how laws are made. Is it okay to say so that we are taking not, onus not, away from schools? Because if there are regulations being made... No, it is not. Vikram Singh, when there is a law made, let's take for example the law that rape is wrong, that rape is a crime and that people should not be raped. If that law is not being enforced, who 
whose responsibility is it, Vikram Singh? It is the job of the government to ensure faithful implementation of its laws and to punish those who disobey the law. And how can the government wash its hands of the case? There, there is a is full the rigid system. education department act. The judicial there is a full system rigid. is there operational. Madam, I don't see how the judicial system comes into the picture before the government steps in. How can you wash your hands of the case? There is a full-fledged education department. There is one district minute. inspector one of minute. schools. One minute. Who is washing away the Please, hands? Madam, what are you I talking? Have heard you you are Please, completely have... misinterpreting what I am saying. Look, if you are one minute. Wonderful. No, one Wonderful. minute. You are misinterpreting. Don't misinterpret. You Continue are misinterpreting, the debate. Don't misinterpret. You are trying yeah, to. Don't misinterpret. You are trying to wash the hands don't of the case of the responsibility yes. of the government. You, you are misinterpreting. Certainly anyway, not. You can then what is the job? What is the job of the district inspector of schools? I am not saying What is the job of the deputy director of schools? What is the job of the education department? If yes. they are not to inspect schools, if they are not for course correction, if they are not there for implement faithfully the government policies, what is the education department there for? And what have you the any time he recognized any school for violating Ramakant such standard Gaur. guidelines? Ramakant Gaur, actually answer this question for me. Arthi Sattis says, what happens to, where does the judiciary come in? Where does the judiciary come in, Ramakant Gaur? See, judiciary will come, uh, will step into the issues only when there, there are some violations brought forward by the uh, state or by some complainant. It is the judiciary who has directed the state of Maharashtra to see, to, uh, to oversee that the CCTV cameras are installed in each school. Thereafter only state, uh, state of Maharashtra woke up. It is not that they woke up themselves. In 2015, a division bench of Bombay High Court has passed this judgment. Now coming back to the role of judiciary, role of judiciary would commence only when some complaint is forwarded before the concerned court or some charge sheet is okay. referred okay. before Arthi it. Sati, I, I realize Arthi, okay, okay, Arthi Sati has to leave, uh, so I, I, I'll give her a, an opportunity to respond to everything before she leaves Arthi Sate. Do you want to make a closing comment? My closing comment is as clear as my opening comment and my debate uh, comments which have happened in the debate. Time and again I am saying that the government has never washed away and especially this government has never washed away its responsibility or shirked away its responsibility. We have at all times taken steps to ensure that safety and security is implemented in schools by issuing GRs, by probably acting on certain directives of the Bombay High Court. But at the same time, let's not ever take away the fact that security in schools is a joint responsibility. And that joint responsibility has to be taken care by schools, by teachers, by parents, by everybody. If there is any violation of law which is reported, the state agencies, the education department and the judiciary at a later stage will definitely step in. So the government machinery is in place. The government machinery, if it fa falters in its execution, we will bring to book such people. We will see to it that these security measures are fully implemented. And at the same time, we will, you know, we will keep updating the regulatory policies. We are working on 24-7 basis, if not 24-7 basis, but on a regular basis to bring about regulatory policies. And our sloganeering for Beti Bachao, Beti, uh, you know, Padhao is not an empty promise. It is a promise which we are committed by well uh, I, I think that you know what what we need to focus on right now is that there are thousands of parents perhaps millions across the country who are watching this program in absolute fear of sending their children to school the next day statistics tell us that nearly half the children in our country are sexually abused at some point or the other and more than half of those children are boys this is not something that only happens to girls it also happens to little boys and to say that government and judiciary will come into play when something goes wrong when there is an incident is breaking the hearts of millions of parents across the country because we need to focus on prevention here we need to focus on the fact that we need to make our schools safer Parents will hold their children's hand when they're crossing the street, when they're getting on the train, when they're getting on the bus, they will keep their children safe. But we cannot do it inside the four walls of a school because we are not allowed inside the four walls of a school. It is up to the government to make sure that those people who run schools as businesses 
and they do, they're very lucrative businesses. It is the government's responsibility to make sure that there are very strict guidelines when it comes to the safety of our children that are enforced and followed and the schools are penalized if those guidelines are not followed. We have discovered through the course of talking about this that there are no guidelines. That if guidelines have been written out by the central government, they have not been notified by most of the states. That even if the guideline has been notified, nobody is following those guidelines and nobody is checking. Which means that in the pecking order of what is important in this country, our children's safety is at the very, very bottom. Very, very bottom. Rachid Gupta, you were talking about what needs to be done. I think what needs to be done is a switch of attitude and a switch of priorities. Whatever we have talked uh, till now in the debate is mostly what has happened after the offence has been committed. Nothing has been talked about what prevention we should take in the schools, what uh, guidelines should be there, what policies should be there in the schools, what rules should be framed. The central government has to make, come in and make some law or the guidelines which should be followed by each and every school and there should be some committees which should be formed. Like in the workplace, uh, workplace the, after the Vishaka judgment, the guidelines have been framed regarding the workplace and uh, harassment, sexual harassment at the workplace. But nothing has been framed uh, for anything in the sexual harassment of the school, in the schools, in the institutions of the ch where the children are there. There should be committee where, should, where the child should be uh, free to go and complain. There should be uh, there should be counselors in every school where the child can go and discuss his problem and the confidentiality should be maintained, the name should be secret, name should be kept secret and it should be, it shouldn't be uh, bring out so that he, she is not harassed by that adult. Because the children are the most vulnerable part of our society. They, they cannot be leave free and uh, uh, make, they, they cannot be leave free and uh, being abu for being abused. There should be. Uh, there was a proposal which was made earlier by the uh, by the government that there should be a guard in every transport system, in the transport system, in the buses, in the in the buses and other vans, in the in the in which the school in the in which the children are transported to the school. There should be a guard, but nothing has been bring forward towards that. There should be a community awareness, the family and the people around the other stakeholders. There should be awareness regarding child protection their vulnerability about their rights about their education there should be an awareness about, uh, there should be a training module which should be framed regarding uh, regarding the uh, different uh, sec different sector of people who are involved in the with the child there should be different yes. uh, there should be uh, guidelines regarding the hostel hostels where no, the but children but are here's, placed here's, here's my question here's my question yeah. rachid you that that the, the picture that you're painting is of an ideal ideal world Let's no, be honest not, about not how idle, much. But no, 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 no. Let's be honest about anything. how much of this parents. Yes, I agree. Can there I, should be a policy. And the people who are writing this policy need to prioritize it. Uh, but yes, yes, go ahead. Can I come in here, Faye? Uh, you know, the biggest problem with our laws is the poor implementation, and it is it is the unless we can guarantee prosecution. We will never, never be able to stop crime. The, the, it is, it, you know, having very stringent penal provisions is not the answer. The answer is guarantee of ju fair judicial process and a fair and, and guarantee of prosecution. We are unable to do that. And that is why there is no fear of the law. So however many guidelines you can put in place, unless everyone knows that the lawmakers are going to come in and the law is going to take its course, nothing is going to happen. Yes. So we, there has to be Schools preventive action. There has to be post action. I don't understand why. Yes. Can I say something? Absolutely. Schools have their licenses cancelled. And, and as, as I speak rules, today, as I speak today, can I just, just to finish? Priority. As I speak today, uh, As, as I speak today, uh, you know, I mean, you must have read that in Chhattisgarh, in an ashram shala, girls have been assaulted and raped. So this is just across the country. Uh, can I say something? Okay. Let, me, let me just bring it. Yes, go ahead. 
You know, Kavita, I wanted to ask you this question. As a principal yourself, tomorrow, if the parents who are watching this show walk into the schools that their children are, are being taught at and say, hey, you know what, I want CCTV camera, I want a, uh, you know, all of the things that Rachid talked about. We want a counsellor that our children can talk to. We want all of these things. How much of that is actually possible today? How many schools will just turn these parents away saying, this is not the rule, I don't have to follow this? Uh, it all depends upon the PTA. So I'm thinking, if it, I'm just looking at everything and wondering, if every school has a strong PTA members, then a lot of things are possible because they can really make the school cry or make the school happy. So if the PTA becomes strong, then they can easily go to the media and automatically the school will have to take everything, all precautions in mind. So this is a very important, crucial thing. And I was just hearing everybody talk. If the judicial system is not able to do anything, if the other systems are not working, empower your parents. I think they're the best people around. And if you can have a fantastic networking relation with them, then it's the best thing to happen in every school. Right, there are a couple of people on the phone line. I'm going to bring them in. Arun is on the phone line from Mumbai. Arun, go ahead. We can hear you. Yeah, uh, Faye, I just wanted to say, I mean, this, what that happened is it's actually a very sickening uh, incident. I mean, it uh, actually, a lot of anger comes out, but I would like to also say that in the, the demand of sacking the principal, I think that is a very ridiculous demand. I think the principal should be held responsible for what happened in the school. So if you're going to catch the pun or the alleged uh, uh, accused, then the principal and the manager, management should also be held responsible accordingly for this also, and they should also be taken to task in a very strict way. Just letting them off the hook and give them a warning is going to be senseless because that's not going to happen. If, if you're more concerned about the school's name and the brand image, yes. I don't think you're fit enough to be a principal yes. of a school if you can't be, if you can't hold yourself accountable for what happened in your own school. If, if something like this has happened under your watch, if something like this has happened when you were the principal, you're right. Kamal Shah on the phone line from Mumbai. Kamal, go ahead. Yeah, ma'am, I would like to ask you from the principal, ma'am, that why we, are in, we have, everything has, has to be taken only after the incident. CCTV has to be mis uh, mandatorily mis uh, put up installed in every school. And apart from all this happening, there is another issue of drug menace in most of the schools. So why all these things, actions should yes. not be taken and before the things are in the incident happen? Why the PTA members are inactive? I'm asking the PTA members. I have seen that I've been uh, two for two terms in the PTA as joint secretary of another private school. You understand that most of the private schools are running commercial institutions. So they are legged in such kind of safety procedures uh, for the school, and uh, everyone wait for the uh, incident to happen. Mm. So I'm asking, requesting yes. the ma'am that whether how these things can be avoided and the initiative has be, should be taken by the management and the PTA has to take the lead to take and see and take care that all proper background checks are done before hiring uh, any of the staff in the school. Right. And yeah. Absolutely. Sorry. Yeah, okay, okay, we have to write, wrap up this conversation, but I know that I am not going to sleep soundly tonight. As most parents in the country are not going to sleep soundly tonight at the very thought of having to drop their children off to school tomorrow without CCTV cameras, without background checks, without a proper policy to make sure that our children are safe for the six or eight hours that they spend in school. Our little boys and our little girls, our precious little children that we hand over to these money-making machines that call themselves schools these days that function without conscience because the government is not interested. There are no regulations. There are no regulations currently in our country that instruct schools on how they should keep our children safe. There are no regulations about background checks. There are no regulations being enforced about CCTV cameras. There are no regulations being enforced about how a principal or anybody else should deal with a complaint that they receive about sexual assault or harassment of one of their students. The government is spending a lot of time and energy these days rewriting history books to paint it a certain color. Where are your priorities? How can we live in a world where our children's safety and our children's innocence is not a priority for us. How can we live in a world where we say that this is a collective responsibility, you can't pin it on the government? That is why you are a government. Your job is to write the policy. Your job is to put out the guidelines and then your job is to enforce them with a strict and an iron hand.
Your job is to make sure that you survey these schools every two months and if they don't have working CCTV cameras, shut them down. If they are hiring pews without doing background checks, shut the school down. Take away their license. That is in your responsibility as a government. How can you possibly bring us to a point where we are talking about the rape of a three-year-old girl inside of her school? What beti bachao? What beti padao? What faith do you expect us to have in you? How are we going to drop our children off at school tomorrow? And this is an expensive school. What about the children who are going to corporation schools and government schools? Who is looking after them? Who is making sure there are CCTV cameras? Who is making sure that peons and teachers are not sexually abusing those children? You have no conscience. No conscience. You spend more time looking after cows than you will making sure our children are safe. Put this on priority, I beg you. We cannot afford another child, we cannot afford another day. This is squarely and solely at the doorstep of every state government in this country. Every last one of them. Because education is a state subject. Every state government. This is your fault. One more case like this is something we cannot afford. You must show us that you are serious. Otherwise, you will lose faith that you can never ever restore. Thanks for watching.